This is Girl Stop Playing. I'm your favorite homegirl, Coriel, here to encourage you to stop playing with your potential and start working for what you want in life and in love. You already know that I'm bringing you the information and the conversations to help you make the money and get the honey. You can have it all as long as you are willing to work and you are in for a treat because we got my big bro, Jack, in the building. He is not new to this. Jack is true to this, okay? We've been down, been been <laughs> for way back when. Yeah. I think like 20, I don't even know, 2013. I don't know. We, I don't um, know. Whenever it was, the yeah. first panel, I always say this because I just feel like it was a monumental moment for uh -huh. me. The first panel that I've ever done, ever, 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 that anybody ever invited me to be a part of, that's the event that I met you at. I love it. And that was like, that's almost like the origin of my And you've been um, going speaking. strong ever since. We've been moving. I got, I got to say, congratulations Thank on all the you. success. I've Thank been waiting you. to say it, and I've been, I've been seeing it, and I've been celebrating. I've been posting and reposting all kind of stuff from you because I you. like to see the growth and the progress, and I like celebrating and rooting for black women and for you because I know how hard that you work, and I know I the work that you put that. in. So, like, Congratulate. And the new studio. I mean, I'm sitting, I'm sitting in a brand. In my ish, yes. Come you on now. Are. Hold on hey. now. Can we just pause, celebrate that just for a second? New look, progress. Yes. That's We're moving. Saying. Trying to keep the momentum. I like it. Thank you. I love I love every last bit of this. Thank so, you. So congratulations. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. Your evolution as well. I think we've both kind of done. We haven't stayed in the same things, but we've definitely kept moving. And yeah. I think as yeah, we yeah. continue to evolve, uh -huh. um, it's just been great to be able to stay connected and witness all of the things. I have been doing this type of work. I've been teaching, coaching, counseling uh, two decades now. Mm. I mean, literally. Don't like, age yourself, over two, Jack. No, no, it's okay. I, I, but I ain't new to this. This is what I'm trying to say. Uh, I came in. I was writing in new. I had a column in newspapers. Wow. You understand? I, so most people don't like even know what newspapers are. Yeah, like people don't even remember what newspapers are, right? But I was. I had a column that was called For the Fellas. Mm -hmm. And it was all about taking or, or viewing relationships uh, through an introspective view from the eyes of men. And it was just like a column that came out every, every week that was talking about relationships from the eyes of men. And people loved it. Yeah. They loved it. And this was before email. This was before like all of the and, and I did one smart thing back then. I put my email at the bottom of my columns. So if you go back and you look and I wrote for all of these, it was syndicated columns. So it was in 57 newspapers across the country. And there's a lot of they had black newspapers back mm -hmm, then, like mm -hmm. the Miami Times and and Atlanta Voice, because we didn't like, I, I had all of those. So I had like, all of those locked down. Every week I was coming out with new information, new relationship talk. And I put my email, and people started emailing me. Mm -hmm. They started emailing me and asking me questions. And then I, I graduated and came up with like a list. Email list. An email list. Yeah. And then it was like, first I was just doing it, I had like a, is this too much information? No, go. Okay, so I had like a, I had like a Hotmail account. I don't even be uh -huh, uh -huh. Hotmail gone now. It's a Hotmail account. I was just emailing people through Hotmail. And then this thing came, came out that was called Constant Contact. Mm -hmm. And Constant Contact came out. And I was like, oh, I can, can do put this everybody in here. Yeah. And then people could, could come and subscribe. And so it, was, it, it, it grew and it kept me in contact with a community of people who mm -hmm. were interested in what it was that I had to say. And what was it? What was the the foundation of what you had to say? Like, do you feel like there was a resounding or overarching message that it was you wanted men. to share? It was literally men. I, I, I felt like men weren't being heard. You know, I would open up magazines. I would look at them. I would, uh, it was like, what a man wants, what a man needs, what a man likes. And you would scroll down to the bottom of an article, and it was written by some woman. And I'm like, how she know what I want? Mm -hmm. How she know what? And there weren't men that were talking about things that men actually wanted, actually needed. And I felt like we needed a voice. Yep. So I was connected. I was doing so many things as it pertained to men in terms of teaching them, in terms of, of coaching. And I was like, I know men. So let me start writing. And, and, and literally it was about things and issues that men had uh, 
and, and, and they weren't discussed from the eyes of men. So I literally, in preparation of this conversation, I was talking about um, just other conversations we've had on the podcast a couple episodes ago. I had a man talking about his experience with divorce mm -hmm. and how that affected his life, how that literally changed the trajectory. You don't hear that. We never hear, hear from that. the men. We think that the men just ride off into the sunset with you know, another woman and are just happy after these divorces. You know and what's not. crazy? One of my first programs, my, my very first program, was a divorce and recover, divorce and relationship recovery program mm -hmm. for men. Mm -hmm. I, I, I opened it up because I had I had recently been married, and I went to all of these different places, you know, like for group therapy, because mm -hmm. uh, they said you need to talk to somebody, and I was like, okay, you need to talk to somebody. I was working in corporate America a little bit, and uh, I went to these places, and I was sitting in the circle talking and telling my story, and I was telling it like a black man would talk to his friends. And I was like, I was like, I don't know. I mean, she just don't get it. I just, I just want to shake her. And they were like, whoa, whoa, hey, buddy. Don't shake You're her. You're so violent. <laughs> Jack, you don't know. And I'm like, I just want to be free. I want to talk about, and I want to talk how I want to talk. So I couldn't find the space that I wanted to be free and to be who it was that I wanted to be as a black man. So I created it. I opened it up, seven guys showed up the first day. Seven guys turned into 12 guys the next week. 12 guys turned into 30 guys. Guy came in probably like two, three weeks in, and he said, hey, man, this is great. I mean, I'm feeling free. I'm talking about it. I'm expressing, and it's like we're having a big party. It's just us guys, us fellas. How much does it cost? And I'm like, I ain't even, I ain't even think about money. Well, like, we, was just, we was just having fun talking about it. People were willing to pay for this type of process. So I came up with a curriculum. I came up with like a whole program that was developed around helping men have a free and a safe space to be able to express themselves. That's why I'm passionate about guys. I'm passionate about men because I don't think we get to just do this. So many programs that are developed for mm -hmm. women, the women like, it's homeless men out here that can't do like, like it's nothing, nothing for, for us. Them. It's yep. nothing for us that it, it, and the whole system has been like just created for women to and i'm not saying that's a bad thing because most of the time women have children women women are kind of you know taking care of multiple things other than just themselves mm -hmm. but what about us i think that uh, now that you all are starting to have a voice right with the with the popularity of podcasts it's turning <laughs> into when men start to express themselves the first thing is like take away all the podcast equipment like yeah, throw everything yeah, yeah, away yeah, yeah. we don't want to hear yeah. this and to your point for years and years and years it's been women talking to other women about what men want exactly and it's like well exactly see? and it's women who ain't got no man you know, women talking to women who don't have men about men. Come so on now. you got to consider the source. Come on. It's like, I'm not going to ask, you know, uh, a corporate person that's only ever worked in corporate mm -hmm. about my business, how to run my business. Right. You haven't done it. Not to say that you don't have any knowledge, but you right. don't have this specific experience right. to help me with this specific need. So I think we have to consider the source and we have to stop getting so defensive. When y'all tell us the truth, yeah. we can't dictate what y'all want. I know. I think it's, I've been watching this space. Like I just been, and I you find been it. You been like double dutch and like. I, you know, I've been out. I've been taking care of babies. Gotcha, girl, <laughs> dad, and that. I got, I got three little girls. I've been trying to take, but I've been watching this thing escalate. Now, there's a few things that are wrong mm -hmm. with with where we're going. One, we're pitting ourselves against each other when we shouldn't be doing that. The it's gender not a, wars. It's not a. It's not a. It's not a battle. It's not a war. We're trying to come together. We're trying to make better connections. But if you can't hear from all sides, because everyone has a difference of opinions, mm -hmm. everyone has a different experience. And I think that sometimes when women are saying, take these microphones away from these guys, these podcasts, men are now having a chance and an opportunity to speak and to voice what's been on their minds. Mm -hmm. Now, I ain't mm -hmm. saying everybody right, because some of these dudes is whack. Yeah. Some of these dudes are very weak, insecure, feel, feelings of inadequacy, and, and a lot of other things that are going on. Mm -hmm. So some of the things that they're projecting ain't right. It's not healthy. It's not healthy. It's not healthy behavior. It's not healthy attitudes, especially when it comes as a malicious intent towards women. A lot of the red pill conversation seems to be like very anti-woman, very anti-marriage, very 
very combative, no no, mm-hmm. no resources. It's mm-hmm. not like, okay, this is the problem, but here's a solution. It's like, well, this is the problem. Women are the only problem. Yeah. Stay away from them. Don't let them play with you. Stay, you know, all of these things, and it's not a healthy conversation. It's not coming from a place of hurt a healed man. It's coming from a place of a hurt man. It's hurt talk. So how did you, because I didn't even know this about you, Jack, that mm-hmm. you had came out of a marriage, and that's oh, kind of yeah. what sparked yeah, yeah, this. Because yeah. you know that's my single wife's story. Yeah. I, you know, out of an engagement, realizing I didn't know nothing, realizing yeah. there wasn't nobody to help me, and I had to figure out how to help myself. Mm-hmm. That can go, that's the crossroads moment, I feel. Because I feel like a lot of those red pill people were at that same crossroads, but they went bitter Instead of trying to get better. They really went better. They yep. went bitter in a, in a big way. Mm-hmm. and Created a whole bitter platform. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not saying, like, I, 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 I've i seen some of the conversations. Everybody's not wrong, but everybody's not right. Mm-hmm. Um, when there's bitterness and when there's hurt, when there's uh, disappointment, people get defensive. Mm-hmm. And they get defensive about their own feelings because they don't want to get back into that same space again. So they're going to do whatever it takes to protect their sanity and their heart. I get it. As men, we feel like you know we have to be strong at all times. But the level of vulnerability that we need to have to be able to heal is non-existent in a lot of some of these conversations. And I think that if most men would be truthful about who it is that they are as a man, Listen, let me, let, me, let me tell you something. Most men realize and know that we need women. Mm-hmm. We need them. We, we need you every single day of our... We wake up with you on our mind. Everything that we do has you on our mind when it comes to, 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 to taking care of ourselves. When it comes to waking up in the morning, brushing our teeth, we're doing that because we don't want you to smell our funky breath. <laughs> With, to the outfit we choose, to the, the the car that we drive, to the job that we have, and the money that we make. We're doing that simply so that we can try to impress upon you that we're good enough for you to be able to accept us. So if most men were honest with themselves, everything that they're talking about that they're doing, there's a lot of stingy dudes out here, selfish guys out here that are talking about, oh, it's all about me. I ain't giving a money, woman half of my stuff. Let me tell you. Look. This is the dumbest conversation I've ever heard in my life coming from an adult male. Mm-hmm. For somebody to say, I don't want to get married and give away half of my stuff, and you are of age, and you're 30 years old or higher? Like, look, man, you can do a Google search to talk about how you don't do that, mm-hmm. how you can sign a prenuptial agreement, how you, can, how, you can, how you can safeguard all of your assets. And if that's the only reason that you're saying, I don't want to be in a relationship or a long-term relationship or a marriage. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. Do you have a prenup? No. 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 Was it a conversation? It was a conversation. How did that conversation go? And I'm gonna this. This is a point. I'm not just being nosy. I'm Mm -hmm. coming back. No, that was that was. We had we had a conversation about it. Um, We just felt like it wasn't for us. Uh, And keep in mind. Both of us were well off Mm -hmm. before we got together, Mm -hmm. right? Like, I made my first million when I was, like, 30 years old. He said, I bet. I ain't new to this. (laughs) this. I mean, let's, let's, you know, I made my first million when I was 30. Um, Money was not an indicator of what we, of of our, uh, money was not an indicator of our intention. Let me say it like that. We had bigger brighter, better aspirations ahead of us and our vision for what we were trying to build. See, that's the thing. We were building something together and we wanted to to, to come to a consensus of this is what we're going to do and this is the vision that we have for each other and for our life, for our family, for the wealth, for the legacy that we're going to leave. We had a vision. So if I put mine with yours, we come together and then we build this for our legacy that we're going to leave, that's what family's all about. Mm-hmm. That's what wealth is all about. It ain't about what I take away, what you take away. Because guess what? If she leave with half, I'm still rich. <laughs> okay? Let's be clear. Right? Let's be clear. Let's be extremely clear. If I left with half, she still be rich. Our children would still be rich or wealthy. I'm going to say wealthy. I'm not going to use rich. It's not about 
assets or or things, mm-hmm. or stuff. Stuff keeps you stuck. And if people keep having that in their mindset in their head, um, now I get it. If you make twenty five thousand dollars a year, <laughs> would you even somebody, be having this conversation? I don't, maybe, maybe. Okay. If you made twenty five thousand dollars a year, and somebody took half. Eh, it's, eh. it's a different circumstances. Eh. Yes. Most of the men that we're talking about don't even make. The people that are having this conversation, this argument about I don't want her to have half of my stuff, don't even make $100,000. I promise you. So they 80, worry about the wrong thing. 80% of them don't even make $100,000. Probably don't even make $80,000. So we, 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 we focus on the real, wrong things mm-hmm. instead of the values that somebody has, instead of the values that a woman brings and, and a man brings to a relationship. Focus on the values, not the valuables. Mm. And I think if you focus on those things, you don't have to worry about the valuables being dissipated or dispersed or divided between the two parties. Because we're talking about a vision that's going to last, a vision that's going to take us a little bit further or a lot further when it comes to our family and our com- comes to our legacy. How do you feel about postnups? I didn't even know this was a thing until recently. It's a thing. I think, um, I think you got to do whatever makes you feel comfortable, honestly. I, I think that I think no, I'm serious because whatever makes you sleep at night, mm-hmm. you do that. Mm-hmm. I sleep well because I'm not wor- I'm not concerned or consumed with because because here's the thing, I've been really broke before, like like really broke, and like I've lost it all, but I know how to make it back. Mm-hmm. I got the skill sets, I got the knowledge, I got the. I got the strategies, I got the expertise, I got the habits, I got the attitudes, the beliefs, the expectations, the expectancy that I know how to get and grind and make it back. Some people are riding on other people's success. So because you're riding on somebody else's success, if you lost it all, you wouldn't know what to do. But if you have the skill sets, what are you worried about? Money is fluid. Money comes from all types of angles. Mm-hmm. And and there's so many ways that you can make it. I just got off the phone with a client who was talking about um, some logistics business that they were just starting and they, they needed a little bit of help in, in framing it and trying to figure out how to to scale and leverage some of the assets that they have in, in, in terms of the business. But anyway, it's lots of ways to make money is my point. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to say whatever makes you sleep at night, if it makes you feel comfortable, to say, you know what, I think our relationship needs this. But what if you don't feel comfortable? What if you're the one that doesn't feel comfortable? How do you come to a point, if you have yeah. a client that's like, this is what I'm dealing with, what advice are you going to give if we just cannot agree? I think it's a conversation that we need to have together as, as, as three people and I be the referee because there's some, there's some inside things that are going on in the context of that relationship that makes you feel like, uh, I probably need to protect myself. There's some internal things that are going on inside of you mm-hmm. that may that that may shift uh, that may have shifted as a result of you now being in a relationship. And I'm not saying you. I'm saying anyone mm-hmm. uh, may have shifted as a result of you being in this relationship. And something says my security is not there. I need to make sure that I'm okay. My child is okay. Mm-hmm. If this if this relationship results in a demise, I just can't imagine myself being instantly offended. Mm. With the that, that's either very way, offensive. with that's the pre or post, offensive. but definitely with the post, because I'm offensive. like, well, what's new? What's changed? Exactly. Well, what's going that's on? That's my point. It's like, well, uh, huh? I thought we we already did. You know, like, like we're we, we're across that we're across that home. The math ain't math, and something's going on. So I was just I was just wondering because I didn't know this was a thing. So I'm like, maybe this it is, is a thing. A thing uh, in other I have had circles a couple, that I'm not a part of. Yeah, I mean, I I had a couple that was experiencing that, and something was going on. Mm-hmm. It's something. So is that a red flag? What do you think, Jack? Is it a red flag? Uh, it's an orange flag. It's a flag. It's a flag, but it's also a. I don't want to call it a flag. I just want to call it. A, Caution. An orange flag. A it caution, ain't red. A caution, but a, caution, a caution to say we need to check in. Something. Because something, something, something is awry. Something is happening yeah. that I don't know about or that we both know about and we feel like this isn't going to be like a... a what are we, what are we a, really doing yeah, here? Wait yeah. a minute. 
But did it? But I mean, but sometimes people come into windfalls, mm-hmm. right? Like right, 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 right. Like, like or a parent. This is the only. These are the only circumstances that I could potentially see. But I'm still side eyeing you. If a parent passes away and they had some outrageous amount of mm-hmm. money that they've left you mm-hmm. maybe but if we've been still, married a decade I still don't see that I still yeah, don't that's see what that. even if we've no, been married a decade this is your mama too now yeah, at this yeah, point yeah, you know yeah, like I, yeah. I just would feel some type of way but, now, now you're talking about this is my money right and we have especially if we have kids what yeah. are we really talking yeah, about here you're talking about this is my money yeah what do you mean it's my money I was with you shooting in the gym though <laughs> like what what happened I don't know um, but okay so I want to kind of transition the conversation for my single ladies okay because right. Here y'all are. I know y'all are sitting here waiting. You're like, Jack is in the building. We're ready to get into the mind of a man. So let's do it. Bring it. The number one question that I don't feel like it's being asked, Mm -hmm. but I think that it's the number one answer that women actually need. Okay. What do men want? The men that we want, what do they want? Listen to me. Love me. Leave me alone. (laughs) <laughs> it could all be so simple. I got her. <laughs> Jack, I'm not le- No. Okay, wait. Let's break this down. Okay, listen to me. Here's what I mean by that. That means don't me, run your mouth? Yeah, yeah you got to no, break let these me, three let me, down. Let me break it down. Okay. Oftentimes, you have men that feel like we don't know exactly where we fit in right now. We, don't, we feel like we're not heard. We're doing a lot of listening to you to your issues, to your problems, to your visions, to your dreams. You mean in life or in relationships? In relationships. Okay. Um, And most men feel like they haven't been heard or that they are not heard because whatever things that they've repressed, whatever things that they they don't tend to express on a normal basis, we don't have anybody to listen to us. You ask the the, the, the average adult male Mm -hmm. that is 25 years or older, and studies studies have shown this, they don't have anybody to talk to. We're getting lonelier as a generation, as, as a culture. The loneliness is, an, loneliness is an epidemic. The Surgeon General came out and said this. We have an epidemic when it comes to loneliness. So most men don't have anyone to talk to. They don't have close friends anymore. They don't have a circle that they go out with, a tribe. They're just in isolation, just feeling like they have no one to talk to. And it's, and, and it's even more isolating when you have that in your own household or in your own relationship. So they just want somebody to listen to them, their hopes, their dreams, their desires, and some of the things that they're actually experiencing on a day-to-day basis. So listen to me. What about when you ask probing questions and you don't get a response? Because some men have have a hard time expressing themselves or communicating their feelings. That's true. So I say this all the time. You have to set the atmosphere the right way for a man to be able to express himself. You gotta set the atmosphere fear for a man to be able to talk. Here's how you do that as a woman. Uh, say you're in a relationship or you you with your man. You're sitting on the couch with him, watching Netflix, chilling, uh, got a little something, drinks, popcorn, whatever. Lay his head on your lap. Mm-hmm. Lay his head on your lap, kick his feet up, let him, but keep keep his head right here. Stroke his head. Why is laying on your lap? Stroke mm-hmm. his head. And then gently turn TV off and say, babe, I just want to talk to you. I want to hear what it is that you have to say. I want to hear who it is that you are as a man. Um, but I have a probing question for you. And, and I don't know if you're going to answer it or not, but I, I, I wanted to set the atmosphere and the mood for this. Ask the man who hurt you. Don't say nothing else. Don't elaborate. Don't ad lib. Ask him who hurt hurt you and I ain't saying and and, and, then, and then if you want to clarify because he's type that type of guy tell him I ain't talking about you know in your relationship or uh, the last relationship your wife or whatever ask him simply who hurt you and let him talk let him talk now you gonna hear some things you you might hear the wildest thing or the wildest story that you've ever heard in your life as it pertains to your man you may hear some disgusting things when it comes to your man, but just listen. Keep stroking his head. Just stroke his head and just be like, mm-hmm. Wow. Really? I did not know that about you. Tell me more. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is fascinating. You, I, I thought you were a great man at first, but keep talking to me. Keep stroking his head. 
keep holding on to him. You got to set that atmosphere the right way for him to be able to openly express and feel vulnerable enough that it's safe for him to be able to do that. Now, here's a caveat. You can't take the information that he he gave to you and weaponize it. That part. Women are known for weaponizing Are women that known oh. for it? Are people known oh. for it? Wait a minute, oh. Jay. Oh, look. Some the reason men, well we talking about men we talking about men and the reason why a lot of men don't talk the uh -huh. reason a lot of men don't talk is because women have been known to weaponize some of our weak points and as men we looked at and we we value the idea that we are strong mm -hmm. we, we we have things together but if I give something to you and then you take it and you turn it against me I'm going to be very disappointed. I'm going to be very disgraced. I'm going to be very distrusting now because there are some women that can talk so down to a man because they know his secrets. You talk so down to that man that he becomes your son. Mm, son them. Literally. I'm talking about he becomes this little mm -hmm, boy. Mm -hmm. You've emasculated him. That, that you've emasculated. This little boy that is no longer a man, your man, because you have weaponized that truth, that secret, that vulnerability that he just shared with you. Who this is getting deep. Okay, so lay him down on my lap, stroke his head. <laughs> Baby, who hurts you? Like that? Was That's that? it. I've been working That's on it. my tone of voice. That That's is it. a thing. Tone is big. That's a thing. Tone is really big. It's not like a, a, a tone like your. It's not an antagonizing tone. It's a. It's a. It's a welcoming, inviting, feminine tone, comforting tone. Mm-hmm. 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 You change that tone in a way that says it's safe, it's okay, this is comfortable, I'm here for you. So listen. Listen to love me. Love me. Love me. Love me unconditionally. Okay. Love me for who it is that I am, for what it is that I bring to the table, for all of my flaws, my faults, my failures, and all the other Fs that you can think of. I don't have anyone to be able to love me. You do that for me, I'm going to do that for you. And then leave I'm, me not alone. Leaving, I'm not leaving. I'm not. I'm not leaving you leave alone. Leave me alone. Let me tell you why. <laughs> and he know that. Let me tell you why. I want to be in no, his skin, Jack. No, leave me alone. Sometimes men, men love our isolation to a, to a, to a certain extent. We love to just go and to be in our corner. That's why we got a garage. The first, the first, first place a man was able to be a man when he was a boy was what his car. His car. Was that's his his uh, it was clean spot. He kept it safe it, space. Everything about everything about that car was is all about him. He loved it. Leave us alone. I ain't saying forever. I'm saying give us some space. The space I, I look. I got a house full of women. <laughs> you do. I got, Jack. I, I got a house full of women. I got like you know two mamas, two nannies, and three, three little three girls, baby girls, and a wife, and a whole wife. You understand know what I'm saying? My isolation and, and, and my alone time is, is valuable. Is because your alone I can, time? I can hear myself think. Is it a daily thing? Are it you disciplined in that way? It is a daily thing. Mm. It's, you know where it is? Outside by the pool. No. Oh, you always make your videos outside by the pool. I, mean, I no, thought that I mean, was no, your no alone time. time by the pool. You know, oh. people I don't see, know. People see me by the pool, they want to come be by the pool. No, it's in the toilet. <laughs> oh, you, you know what, Jack? That is a thing, because I be so most mad. Men, I'm telling you, most men. Y'all like, be in there playing around. Oh, no, we don't be playing around. Kendrick no, no, be no. playing around. No, 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 he don't be playing around. He getting his alone time. He getting that time where he ain't got to talk to you, where he ain't got to answer your probing questions, where he ain't got to hear about what happened with so-and-so and so. Look, I just, just quiet. Quiet. Like, everything is quiet. I came in here, I told my man, I was like, it's so quiet in here. It felt, it feels, we recharge our energy off of that quiet. I ain't saying leave us alone in that sense. I'm saying let us be, uh, let us be by ourselves so that we can recharge and then come and give you some of the things that you need in terms of listening to you and loving you, being with you and the attention that you need for us to be able to cater to you. But just leave us alone. Let me sit on the toilet. And, and scroll through something and read a book for or, an hour you know i mean hey while, while i got all these kids before i became a mom jack let me tell you what i did because i'm gonna get some points for this i think you're gonna appreciate this before i became a mother 
Uh-huh. When Kendrick would get home from work, yep. I would give him like his thirty minutes of quiet. Like, don't okay, don't buy. Good. I mean, yeah. of course, I would greet him at the door, but I wouldn't like jump right in with whatever I had yeah, going on. I'm yeah. like, I know that you need to decompress. You've had this day, whatever. Yeah. Now that I have kids, that shit it is out the window. You ain't getting no thirty minutes because my shift is up. Uh, clock in. Uh, but in theory, is that's kind of what you mean? Is that an I'm, example? Or I mean, no? if he just give him okay, so he might not get thirty. Give him twenty. Three. Give him 20. Now, just 20, 20, time. 20 and he can jump in. 20, and I promise you, you give him 20 minutes before he has to jump in, he's going to be a much better man. 20 after I've been with the kids. That's 20 minutes? Oh, that's, that's good. 20 minutes is great for a man to recharge. It seems like two hours, but okay, we'll try it. I'll let you know how 20 it minutes. That's it. Okay. That's all he needs. 20. You give me 20, I'm back in there. <sighs> okay. So, ladies, <laughs> in, in summary, listen to me. Love me and try to leave him alone. Give him some alone time. Just some space. That sounds better. I'll give you some alone time. Yeah, just some leave space. you alone is like, I know. why you want me to leave you alone? I know. But I love you. Don't you love me too? Why would I leave you alone? Um, okay. Next question that I think is <laughs> equally as important since we are getting into the mind of a man. Mm-hmm. And I know you got this answer, Jack. Uh oh. It ain't too many people that have this answer. I mean, you might be the only one person Uh-oh. that I honestly know that has the answer, but Uh-oh. you got it. Where are the good men at? Where are they hiding? Everywhere. And when I say that, I'm saying that with such confidence. Okay. I find great guys everywhere I go. As long as I've been doing this work, I have found great guys. Statistically, Okay, let me say it like this. Let me ask you this question before I break this down. Do you want to know where to find them or where are they? I want to know both. You, Can I know both? Of course you want to know both. They want to know both. I mean, I got mine. I know where to find mine, but they want to know both. So, okay, so I'll, I'll preface it by saying this. I think most women are asking the wrong question. Okay. When they say, where are the good men? They think they could just go to the place. Don't worry about don't worry about where are the good men. It's okay. not about where are the good men. Bad questions get bad answers. Don't concern yourself about where are the good men. Your question should be where is my good man? If you only break it down to one, oh, it changes everything. It changes everything because now you're not looking for a cluster of people. You're only looking for one person. So that's number one. Mm-hmm. Number two, where do they hang out? Where do great guys hang out? They hang out in a variety of places. Most women don't go to where men are. <laughs> you just don't. Because you think like a woman. Most women, like, I, I put this post out all the time. I say, he, he, he can't find you on your couch. Facts. You're on your couch. Like, what are you doing on your couch every single weekend? Put yourself in position to be found by someone who is good or who you deem as to be good. There are a variety of places that great guys cluster Mm -hmm. Uh, places that I find great guys you know I run the good men's club I don't have problems finding good men to be in the good men's club Uh, I mean whether it's from conferences whether it's golf courses uh, car washes grocery stores I I, I got a question Jack go ahead what qualifies a good man oh I vet but what do you vet based on I vet very well I vet well I do probing questions. Okay. I do a lot of probing. I'm not mm-hmm. going to sit here and give all of the probing well, questions. Well, you don't want to give away your I think I, I think that most people ask cookie-cutter questions instead of asking the real, true questions about uh, that validates who a man actually is. So a simple question would be something like that you would never ask. You never ask a guy this. Who taught you how to pee? Do you have a father? Did you grow up with a man in your house? Who taught you how to pee? And, and, and if you don't have an answer for that, if your mom taught you how to pee, if your uncle taught you how to pee, do you have a circle around you of men who taught you how to be a man or to become a man? Those are questions that are more probing for a guy that, that has to then think about, okay, well, I don't know who taught me how to pee. But if you had a dad in your life, you You're know your dad. You're assuming that it was your daddy. Your you know your dad taught yeah. you how to pee. Or no, most men. If you if you if, remember, if, if you grew up with a dad, mm-hmm. you knew. I know exactly when I pee. I know exactly who I'm emulating. I'm emulating oh, my gotcha, dad. Oh, got you, got you, got you. Okay, I saw okay. my dad. Yeah. With one hand on his hip, <laughs> 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 hard, 
holding it, you know. You know, I saw I saw that out of my peripheral and you know, as a as a young boy. So that's how I learned gotcha. how to pee. But if you don't have that, you don't have that surrounding or you're not in that environment, as a man, some of those things are awry. So then you have to think about, well, how was that guy raised? Who raised him? What circle? What tribe? Uh, did he, he probably didn't come from a two parent household. He probably didn't probably came from a single parent household, which it's not a problem with that. But there are some things and some factors. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So questions like that get to the nucleus of who and the core of who a guy actually is. So I ask vetting, probing questions gotcha. to determine. Now, does it mean that he ha- he doesn't have flaws? He doesn't have faults? Of course no, not. of course not. Like no one. I mean. Good is relevant. Mm-hmm. I mean, relative. Relative, right? It's relative. Uh, how it, it really depends on who the other person is. Now, I could do as much vetting as I possibly can. The bigger thing is, how do I put you in position to be connected to that type of guy? Like, what are you doing actively in your life? Intentionally. And intentionally that can help you get connected to a guy like that. Mm-hmm. So... The Good Men's Club is all about, hey, I'm collecting guys. I'm passing around a collection plate. I, literally, I pass around a collection plate all the time. Uh, do you know a good man? Have you seen a good man? Uh, can you give him to me? Where's his number? All of those different things. Everywhere I go, I'm questioning. I'm asking, you single man? You got a woman in your life? Is anybody, like, claiming you <laughs> or, like, secretly claiming you or need to be claiming you? If not... I start asking my questions. Are you looking? Are you actively I was going to ask, looking? does being uh, interested in commitment, is that a qualifier to Absolutely. be a good man? Okay. You would be amazed how many men are. We do not want to be alone. The scariest thing for men is dying alone. Why aren't women scared to die alone? You are. You just don't like talking about it. Men don't like saying it. But because we actively are looking and searching for somebody to spend our time and our life and our energy and our income on, those things are saying from, from, a, from a, 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 an active standpoint that we really want to be with somebody. We really need somebody in our lives to make us better. So we got y'all wrong, basically, is what you're saying. We have oh. convinced ourselves that men don't want in, to be in a relationship. Oh, no, 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 they no. don't want to com- no, no, commit. No, 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 no. You know, it's it's frustrating to me. So we live in Atlanta, mm-hmm. right? We live in Atlanta. Some of the some of the the jargon and the well, let me ask you: Is it more women or is it's it more the men ratio in Atlanta? To is it twenty six women to 22 one to man? One, blah blah yeah. blah. Where they getting the from? The ones that ain't gay, they lo- you know all of the Where they things. Where they getting from? They already married. I- it's not true. It's, it's so untrue. Let's do the numbers. Can we? Of course. Can we do the numbers? First and foremost, location really matters. Mm-hmm. Location is so pivotal. I say there's four things that matter in a relationship. Your list, your love story, location, and a little bit of luck. we come back to those a little bit later. But location is pivotal. Most people are struggling in being single because they're in the wrong spot. They're in the wrong location. They're in the wrong part of the country. They're in the wrong city, the wrong geography. Like the environment, your environment means a lot. Uh, 65% of the black population lives in the South and Northeast in America. 65%. Now, let's just talk about Atlanta. It's 22 to 1? No, it's not. Okay, how do you know, Jack? Because I read. I actually read things. I actually like looking. You didn't just hear that on TikTok? I ain't hear that. I ain't hear that from somebody's okay. opinion or my girlfriend that got hurt by two dudes and now all of a sudden everybody. No. You gotta stop listening to other people and do your own research. Let's go to the U.S. Census. Can we do that? Mm-hmm. Okay. So the U.S. Census says there are two million people in the city of Atlanta. That's Atlanta proper. That's inside the perimeter. Let's just talk about that for a fact. There's about two million people in the city of Atlanta. Out of those two million people, forty-nine percent are men. Fifty-one percent are women. Okay. Out of that 49 and 51 percent, half of those people are single. So now we got a million people because everybody else is married or children. Okay, so we got a million people that, uh, and, and you divide that 49 percent, 51 percent. Now we half already single people. 
Okay. We got we got single people, half. Now, let's just go a little bit further. Let's dive in just a little bit further. So if half of those are single, let's just take out, because we are here, we know, we see, let's take out two, 300,000 of them and say that those are the others, mm -hmm. right? They're looking for same-sex relationships. Mm -hmm. I don't know what to call people these days. I just call alphabet people. The alphabet boys. I just say alphabet people. I don't know. Because I, I mess it We're up. We're kind of politically incorrect here. Don't worry. I mess it all up. I don't care. Y'all It's hard. I can't keep up. I can't keep up. Y'all can come for me later. Uh, so you take the two, three hundred thousand out. Now you got seven hundred thousand people. Okay? Mm -hmm. You got seven hundred thousand people, forty-nine percent men, fifty-one percent women. Let's take out another hundred thousand for those that are, are still kind of trying to figure it out. They don't want to be committed. Now you got six hundred thousand people. You got three hundred thousand people on each side. Mm -hmm. You got a group of 300,000 people. Where's the 22 to 1 come in at? Where did that rumor come from, I wonder? It's a rumor. That's all it is. It's a rumor. I think that it's a defense mechanism, an escape route, an excuse. Yep. It's, it's a, a, it's, it's a it's not me, one. it's the math. It's, it's not me, it's the numbers. It's not it's me. Not the numbers. You got to look at the statistics. The it's numbers are, like, the numbers came from an opinion and not from facts. I like the, I like the ride in facts and not opinion. And then you talk about, so when I when I first moved to Atlanta, and people used to say that, you know who gets offended the most? Men. Really? Oh, men get offended when you say that. When you say uh, all the men ain't about nothing in Atlanta. Oh, yeah, of they course. Either, mm -hmm. They either uh, uh, married or liking somebody else other than women, right? Men get offended by that. Like, had they been to Atlanta? Like, had they had they really been to Atlanta? Like, you go on the outskirts. Like, it's there's a cluster of all of that that goes mm -hmm. on. True, there's nothing wrong with it. Like who you like, love whoever you want love. But on the outskirts and the and the like, you know, the surrounding suburb, it's men. So location is definitely a thing. Location is a thing. I think the same way we just talked about women not being afraid to die alone or, you know, running around with the rhetoric of, I don't mind being, I don't need no, you know, that whole thing. Mm -hmm. I think another part of the conversation is on, um, damn, I just lost my train of thought. Where was I going with this? Uh, oh, w women not even wanting to admit that they want relationships, right? Mm -hmm. So I had someone come sit on the couch and her story was she knew that she wanted to be married. She was okay. in a very male-dominated industry. She had to have very male, masculine energy in this in this job that she was in, in this career field. Mm. And she made the conscious decision to walk away because she knew that she desired marriage one day. Didn't have mm. a man, was single mm. as hell. No, no mm -hmm. actual man in sight, but she knew that this career was not going to allow the space for marriage. And I was like, wow, that's really you betting on yourself. That's, that's really you having faith, making that bold, you know, move, taking that bold action. And I don't think many women would be willing to do that. And when you, I brought that up because when you mentioned location last time, everybody, well, a lot of people in the comments are like, I'm not moving for no man. I don't, yeah, yeah, and yeah. it's like, well, what do you really want? Uh -huh. What do you really want in life if you're not willing to sacrifice anything to get what you want? Some people are comfortable being stuck. Some people are comfortable being single. Some people are comfortable being someone side chick. And because someone tells you that, hey, there's a better way, there's another way to do it, mm -hmm. and you get defensive and say, well, I'm not doing all of that just, just to find somebody or somebody to find me. Well, how's it been working for you? How's it been, how, how's it been working in terms of your relationship, mm -hmm. in terms of your single status? If that's not what you want, I'm not telling you to move anywhere. I, I would I would never tell anybody to move. But I would tell somebody to be open to long distance relationships. I would tell somebody because maybe the prerequisites that you have and the preferences that you have for a significant other aren't where you are. So you might want to be open to the possibility mm -hmm. of someone being across the country or being in another city or being in another county. And be open to the possibility of long distance relationship. But if you just want to stay where you are because keep, you're so keep doing stubborn, what you're doing. Mm -hmm. keep doing what you're doing. I had someone else sit on the couch here in Atlanta, live here in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. 
and literally said, like, I don't want to date anybody outside of the perimeter. Like, I live in Midtown. Oh, God. And I'm not even... <laughs> when I hear things like that, I'm like, girl, I can't even defend you That's with this it. foolishness. No. I can't no. even... No. Because what are we talking about here? You can't drive 45 minutes for your future? Exactly. Okay, well, then just be... You know, at some point, it's like... Some if of the, you want different results, you have to make different decisions and do different things. Some of these antics are getting very dumb. They are. It's just it's not making sense. At and, all. And for me, I'm like, well, what is it that you really want? Hardest question for people to answer. What do you want? I, I, I mean, I've counseled and coached thousands of people. Hardest question for them to answer is what do you want? Well, I want, I want, I want. Um, I'm not sure, but I think I want and if you don't have the clarity, then clarity, the lack of clarity causes confusion mm -hmm. and chaos. And that chaos then turns into no, no commitment. Oof. All the C's and none of the ones that you actually want. So we find the good men, right? Even if you're here in ATL, okay? Okay, so oh, what, I, I forgot oh, to tell you where. Oh, where? Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. And then my next question is once we get to the where. Okay, so, so where... Where do you find great guys? Mm -hmm. You find great guys everywhere. I just think women are doing it wrong. Okay. I think that one, uh, I call them the terrible tees. Y'all got to stay out of, stay out of Target, stay out of TJ Maxx. <laughs> I got you. That was one. That's that yours. was a good one. Say uh, Target, TJ Maxx, and what's the other one? It's not Trader Joe's, is Trader it? Trader Joe's. You can go you get you a good stay, vegan look, man down at the Trader that's Joe's. That's what you think. Okay, okay. Ty, do you shop at Trader Joe's? Oh. See what I'm saying? Okay. I'm just, I, I ain't saying men don't do they, stop. You go to Whole Foods? Where do they go? Stay out of Target, TJ Maxx, and Trader Joe's. I ain't saying you don't have to go there, but if you go in there with the expectation this the is the only place at. that I'm going this weekend and I'm looking for a man, you ain't going to find him there. Ain't no single men up in Target pushing the cart around talking about I need to I need to I need to get this for my bathroom. No. He's not there. He he's not at TJ Maxx shopping the clearance section in the back. He's not there. I'm saying if you do go to the grocery store, men are at the grocery store. We are at the grocery store. But here's the thing, women are going to the grocery store at the wrong times. Men go to this is a secret. Mm -hmm. This is a jewel. Men go to the grocery store at night. Mm -hmm. Go to the grocery store after 9 o'clock at night. I promise you, you see nothing but men in the aisles. And if you really gangster, here's how you do it. You go, you, you dress up, and just do exactly what I'm telling you to do. Put your yoga pants on. Oh, that's your dressing put up? Put a t-shirt. Listen to me. <laughs> Listen to me. It ain't dressing up, it's dressing down. Okay. A lot of y'all trying too hard. Men don't like it when you try too hard. Put your yoga pants on, uh, a wife beater, ball cap, Sneakers. That's all you need. Walk past, no makeup. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You know, you understand why that's important? Because we like to know what we're going to get when we wake up in the morning. And you will get hit on more when you dress down versus when you dress up. I promise you. Go to the grocery store, 9 o'clock at night. Dress down. Go to the cereal aisle. <laughs> go to the bread aisle. Go to the alcohol aisle. And I promise you, you're going to find a man that's sitting there sifting through. And you know what else that says about that man? It says he's single. He ain't got nobody to cook for him. He need help me. Steve. He needs help. And he's waiting on you to walk past in your yoga pants and your ball cap with no makeup on and sneakers, just sashaying down the aisle, moving and grooving. And I promise you, he'd be like, uh, uh, excuse me. Um, one quick note. The bonnet is not to be exchanged for the ball no, cap. No, 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 I just no, want to say, no, you know, you just said dress down. Somebody no take bonnets. it the wrong way. Don't do it. Take your bonnet off. Take the bonnet take off. Bonnet. Don't do it. Now, ponytails help. Yes. Put the hat on, ponytail. No makeup. So it's true that women do all of the things for other women. Because one of the things that we say to ourselves and even, you know, on the Internet is y'all talk all of this stuff about we want the natural woman. No weave, no wig, no mm. makeup, no legend, no... But that's not who y'all are dating. That's not who you marry. Now, obviously, the woman you marry is not that all of the time. Right. But I think that it's, it is confusing to hear that you don't want it. I think we want, no, we want, we want someone that has the potential to dress up mm -hmm. and to, to wear and to be all of those parts when we go out. When I want to show off 
and have you on my arm and look. You got the potential to do it. But every day, 70, 80 percent of the time, we sitting on the couch. I got to be able to look at you. I got to be able to be attracted to you. Mm-hmm. I got to I got to be able to, to to feel something in my loins when I look over and you roll over and and like if you're not the person that I met and you taking the wig and the hair off and then I got to roll over and, and yeah. Question though, Jack, because yeah. I have been told that men have sex with women they're not attracted to, but that wouldn't be the case, I guess. Like, it's not the case. We're talking wife. about life partner. Yeah. Versus. But how do you? Because well, uh, see, some men, men, sex is just a release for some men. It's not exactly like uh, a bonding experience all the time. I'm not saying for every man. I'm saying for most men, sex is sometimes just a release. It's something that I, I just, <laughs> you'll do. Come here. <laughs> proximity. She's walking. She's talking. She. I know. But proximity right. infatuation is a thing. Is a thing. Okay. Like that's why you like you, you you see and you you look at a dude and you're like, how did that happen? Proximity infatuation. He, he she was there. She was the best one available in the pick of the litter of wherever we were together. So wherever we were, whether it was a group trip, it was a it was a, a cruise, it was a party. Limited options. This was the best one that was available. Which used to work a lot back in the day before social media, which is why a lot more people got married. Because you didn't see all these other options. You didn't have options. And options are what are killing a lot of our relationships and Mm. the potential to have relationships because people think that they have a greater list of options when they really don't. It may look that way. It may appear that way because of all of the access that you have to pictures, to videos, to other women uh, the looking bigger, better, greater, b- more beautiful than the one that you currently have, but it's not really access the way that you want that access. The options mm-hmm. that you think that you're going to have leads to no options at all. And and, and it is, several studies have proven this. The more options you have, the less decisions of commitment that you actually make. You do it in cell studies. There was a, there was a, a, a study they did, uh, University of California, and they actually took... Um, uh, jelly mm-hmm. in in a, in a grocery store and they put 16 flavors of jelly and they, they asked and surveyed people and see how many you know what which people would actually buy this jelly so there's a 16 out of 16 I uh, was like I don't know maybe like three percent of the people that actually bought the jelly they narrowed it down to then four flavors of jelly the numbers then went up to 60 percent of the when people were that less actually access. committed to purchasing the jelly. So the more options you have, the less commitment you're going to get. Analysis paralysis. It's like it's too much. I can't pick. It's too pick. much. Yeah, I, I can't pick can't. one. I'm, I'm just frustrated now. I just forget it. And that's why I always tell men. I was like, man, y'all, you just you got to be like, you got to be like uh, 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 Simi and, and, and Akeem when they were sitting in the gym and they had the beauty pageant. And Simi was like, okay, they're all beautiful. Pick one and let's go home. <laughs> <laughs> and it, you just got you got to pick one and go home, man. Pick one and let's and go figure home. the rest out later. Figure the rest out later. I'll come one. see you, Jack. You got you got well. Can they yeah. come see you, or they can only see you before they pick the one? No, they can definitely. No, they can come see me. Okay. No, I'm all about love. I'm all about relationships. I'm about keeping it tight, keeping it right, uh, helping singles become couples and couples become one. So I don't. I'm not about like you know when you in trouble, you got to figure it out on your own. Nah, man. I want to keep it together because we're talking about legacy. We're talking about building and connecting a community and a tribe of people that are growing and thriving. So I believe hardcore in 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 the nucleus of relationships, and I like to to help facilitate the growth and and prosperity of them in every single way. For sure, I I believe wholly in this vision of creating a true village because we talk about the yeah. concept of a village in in um in the sense of raising kids, but yep. Now that I'm married, you need a village for your marriage. You, you need do. a village yeah. for your mental health. You just need yeah. a village. And yeah. so I think a lot of people are talking about relationship and marriage because it's like a hot topic. It's, you know, let's mm-hmm. go viral and talk about this mm-hmm. stuff. But it's like, no, we're trying to build families. families. Because at the Friends, foundation all of, of all of this, it's like if we cannot come together and figure it out, how are we going to have this black excellence? How are we building this black wealth? Wasting how are we time. doing anything if we can't yeah. even figure this out? This part out. You're wasting time. Wasting time. So no, I'm with you 100. percent Did I say where? I said I said the grocery store. Right? You said the grocery store. I said the grocery yes. store. That's all I said. That's all you said. That's it. That's it. I mean, that's it. That's that was, enough. That was a good nugget. 
cigar bar, That's golf right. course, country uh, club, city club. I heard th there's city clubs. Yeah, you can you can go to all of those different types of things. What, oh. So what I would tell you okay. is, is, is in terms of, you know, putting yourself in position to be found. Mm -hmm. You got to go to where men got to think like, I don't want to say think like a man because that's so cliche. I'm just saying whatever it is that you're doing that hasn't been working, do the opposite. Don't now. do that. Like, no like don't do that no more. Like, like so many women have, um, I get all these women that, you know, I used to do a whole bunch of relationship counseling. And like, I need, I need, I need help with my dating life. Help me figure this out. Okay, cool. What you doing? Let's 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 map it out. Let's look at the schedule. What you doing? Okay, well, I go to work. I go to the grocery store. I go to TJ Maxx. <laughs> I go to choir rehearsal on Wednesday. I go to prayer meeting on Thursday, and then I'm uh, uh, at church on uh, Sunday. Okay. How about where are the men in any of those situations? If there are no men in any of those situations, you probably need to cut a couple of those out. And I'm not saying that you're going to places just to be looking for men, but you got to position yourself a little bit differently if you want something differently. So how about uh, if, if instead of going to church on Sunday, how about you go to a football game? Just like like every every third Sunday, you go to the football game because that way it's lots of men in the audience and you're positioning yourself. God ain't gonna be mad at you. You can get off your holy horse God just know for your like heart. just just for third Sunday. Third Sunday, you got you ain't missing nothing. You ain't missing sacrament or you know whatever it is. You, you be all right. Third Sunday, go to a football game, basketball game, something that takes you out of the pocket of what you're accustomed to doing and in position so that you can actually be found. A lot of people talking about what? Well, okay, we got you got church folk that be okay. Where's your Boaz? Right? Okay, you talk about your Boaz. Where's my Boaz? Well, they talking about well, Ruth was just sitting there and Boaz found her. It ain't true. It's not That's actually not how true. it happened. That's not how it happened. I don't think they actually read it. They just listening to somebody else. Now, what's really typical is that it's not just about Ruth. I think what tends to happen is you forget about the real key person that's in that story, which is Naomi. Now, Naomi is the person that's in the middle that told Ruth what she needed to do to get that man's attention, which was position herself mm -hmm. so the man can actually see her gleaming in the field. But if you didn't have, if, if there was no Naomi, there would be no Boaz and Ruth. But you got to start listening to the Naomi's of your life to be able to do something different versus just saying, oh, I'm just going to sit here and wait for my Boaz. Waiting has been the killer of so many dreams. If you waiting for Boaz, he is not going to find your ass. Because is he coming to your house? <laughs> is he knocking on your door? Is he delivering the groceries? Where is he? And then if it is the grocery man, because it ain't nothing wrong with the grocery man, but you're going to talk about him because he's not a high value man. So what do you want? Again, oh when you, you ask the hardest question to answer, what do you want? I'm agreeing with you now, Jack, because y'all don't know what you want. Yeah. You, say what you, you say you want one thing, but then your actions... I, I, say I, I just different. say, like, I, I love connecting people, mm -hmm. but I also love helping people understand that they have to position themselves differently. That part. And, and, and that's a mindset. Yep. That's a mindset. How do you connect people better uh, when they've been accustomed to doing one thing for so long in so in many things? In one way. In, in one way. You got to change up. You got to switch up your flow. And I'm, I'm adamant about helping people understand and do that. So... You know, you're going to see me push the needle, push the thread. Yes, I got some and we things can't wait. Coming. It's I got coming. Some, I got some. You got to come back so we can talk about it. I know. Because I don't I'm even burning. want to talk around it. Don't. I know. No, no, I we're know. Not gonna, I'm, burn, we, I'm we're burning gonna to back. say something. I just can't say what I want to say. So we got to wait until we have all the details. But okay. it's juicy. It's good. It's what y'all been waiting for. I mean, okay. the Good Men's Club. I'm I'm about to I'm y'all want everybody's always asking me you got so all these good men this huge database Where they at? all Where these they guys at? like and you've seen the work you see my track record you see I've introduced you to them I took us an entire year and just introduced you to man after man after man you did that and I'm talking about I I, I I let you ask them questions I let you let you hear from them straight from the I got all these guys yep I'm I'm really literally about to give away my list. I'm about to, I'm about to give away my phone list because I'm tired of y'all asking me where they at because I'm I'm about to show putting them out of their misery. I'm putting pulling I'm up with them. the good man. I'm giving to you. How okay? So they can't. 
how can they stay connected with you so, so that they will know when this is ready? So so go to goodmen.tv. Okay. And you can sign up for the VIP list. I ain't giving it to everybody. It's limited access. So the sooner you get on there, the better. Goodmen.tv, get on the list. As soon as it's ready, I'm Something's like, coming. here you go. Look, here you go. I need to be like an ambassador for this because the people have been waiting. Yeah. I got, look, 100%. they on my line all the 100%. time. Where are they? So trust me when I say it's something that you are not going to want to miss because you've been praying for this thing, okay? Not just asking for it. You've been asking the Lord <laughs> for this. I've been hearing the y'all Lord. talk. I've been hearing y'all talk about it in these streets. <laughs> the prayers have been going up and the solution is coming down. So. I got you. I am so appreciative, as always, to have you in the building, Jack. We gotta go already. Another, we gotta go, but I you're coming like, back. I feel like we we just touched. The we just surface. got getting started really... because we could go for I mean That's days. True. We true. say this every single time, That's true. and I do have so many more questions. So we definitely will have you back okay, for we'll sure. Do it again. I know that y'all enjoyed this episode. Let me know down in the comments just one thing, maybe one or two, that you are taking away from this conversation. Are you gonna stay away from Target? Will you be headed to the cereal? <laughs> aisle near you like what's going on sis let me know what you're taking away if you have questions for jack drop them down below so that i can ask him next time he's back in the studio make sure you subscribe to the channel and check out the show notes below for my free grown woman guide a monthly newsletter that i'm sending out to grown ass women who want to get their lives together um and you're 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 tired of playing games So, girls, stop playing. The resources are here for you. Thank you for tuning in, and I'll see you on the next episode. Girls, stop playing. Peace. If you enjoyed that episode, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any upcoming content. And take it a step further and go ahead and join our private community over on Patreon because it comes with some pretty bomb perks, including early and discounted access to our upcoming events, behind the scene exclusives with some of your favorite guests, the opportunity to call in on an upcoming show, the chance to vote on topics and guests for brand new shows, and I'm even giving you unlimited access to my vault of business classes where I'm teaching you everything from Airbnb to developing digital products and everything in between. And you can get access to our Patreon for as little as $5 a month, okay? Get in where you fit in, and I'll see you on the inside. Peace.